Hi, I'm Sam Oaks, and I'm taking over the Just Covered podcast. If you don't know me, I'm the host of the Financial Planner Life podcast. And today it's the Christmas special, and I'm joined by Hazel and Wayne, obviously the hosts of the Just Covered podcast. And we're going to find out what the last 12 months has been all about and what to look forward to in the new year. So welcome to the Just Covered podcast, a bit of a switch around. I'm Sam Oakes from the Financial Planner Life, and we've been on this journey with you with the Just Covered podcast, and I can't believe it's one year and we're celebrating it at Christmas by me being the host of the Just Covered podcast. So I get to interview the hosts to find out a little bit about you and the journey you've been on with the podcast, and we're going to talk about how the podcast has helped you in your jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. So Wayne, first off, let's get to know you a little bit. So. Wayne, what is it you actually do? What's your what's your job role for those that maybe don't know? Yeah, so I'm an account director for League of the General. I'm in the intermediary team. So I work with some of our biggest strategic partners on a day-to-day -day basis, looking at how we can implement strategies to make sure they can meet their aims and objectives. Generally, they're, they're mutually agreed aims and objectives, which are all around ensuring that more customers, as many customers as possible, are covered you know, from a protection perspective. Uh, but also with regards to what we do in the podcast type of thing as well, in how we've been doing it, I think it's been a really great, you know, being one year in, in terms of we've done that, in order to bolster that and get that awareness out there for advisors, for my strategic partners, I, th I think the podcast that we've been doing has been such a great addition to that, another string to our bow, if you like. So, so yeah, that's what I do. Um, that's the day job. Obviously, the elements that we've been doing with regards to this have, have helped, and it's just so great to work with Hazel, like-minded person that, that's on the same page and here we are. Fantastic. So how long have you been at LNG for now? Uh, nearly 16 years. Nearly 16 uh, years yeah, of a veteran. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bring, bring in, bringing <laughs> podcasting into the job role that you're doing, it has been beneficial for you. You found some benefit from doing that. Yeah, I feel totally infused about it. Yeah. I think the fact that Hazel, and she'll talk about it in a minute, when we first met, when she joined LNG, and we talked about what we were going to do with this podcast, and Hazel had an idea, and I've been thinking the same thing, because um, and maybe we'll, it will come out in, as part of the, the episode today, is that we haven't got the benefit of the, the wider education pieces, the bank assurance setups, and all that type of thing that we used to have. So what do we need to get that sort of awareness out there of hints and tips of advisors that are doing it on a daily basis, rather than listening to us saying, perhaps you should try this, you should try that. Let's get people on that are actually doing it. So that peer-to-peer -peer element we thought was a real gap in the market, and that's why we've done it. Amazing. Hazel, tell us a little bit about your background and what you do at LNG. Yes, yeah, so I'm slightly newer to legal in general. Uh, I joined a year past, oh, it'll be two years in February. So yeah, coming up from two years and it's flown by. Uh, my background before that was in mortgage advice, equity release advice and protection. Um, I was a regional sales manager for mortgage, equity release and protection advisors. So I have had advice and experience. I'm also qualified in financial planning as well. So um my job at the moment with Legal in General as a market development manager is to really help advisors grow their market. So um, as much as I'll help with Legal in General product, my main aim is just to actually get them to add protection to their process, whether they sell it or refer. Um, so I can absolutely help with like business strategy, uh, webinars, workshops, anything that an advisor might want or need. Um, absolutely the team I'm part of, we, we help with that to grow that industry. Um, and I think when I was advising, the thing I learned from the most was my peers. That like that's the only way that I became like a good advisor was actually stealing bits from other advisors in their appointments. And absolutely, as Wayne said, when I joined, I, you know, I said that to Wayne. I was like, I miss hearing other advisors. And for me to be good at my role, I need to keep him with that. But also, when I was learning, I wouldn't have got to where I was if I hadn't had that experience and exposure to hearing other conversations. And that's where the podcast came from, was actually how can we replicate that natural learning experience that you'd get in an office, but on Spotify, YouTube, and, and through that podcast platform. Love it. Yeah. I'm a massive fan of podcasts, obviously running my own podcast, The Financial Planner Life, but I've always listened to podcasts and it's a style of learning that really suits me. It's one of those things that I can do when I'm running or if I'm at the gym or if I'm cooking or if I'm driving somewhere. And I think having that on-demand access to peer-to-peer -peer learning, especially learning from those within the profession that might often sometimes be your competitors. Historically, you might see them as your competitors. And all of a sudden, you're getting an insight into how they're doing business, what they're doing well, what they're maybe not doing so well, the ups and downs, the realities of the job that they're actually doing. And I think people really like that authenticity. 
okay. you know, that insight. And most people take something away from it. And when you listen, you really do absorb that information. Um, yeah, and it's that freedom to be able to do it anytime you want to do it. So instead of you having to be able to sit down with somebody every single day and sit them face to face, they can, you know, you're in their ear, chatting away to them, giving them some advice, which is fantastic. Mm. And I've always been a firm believer that the more you can learn and expose yourself to other things, the better you can be. So it was interesting that I had this idea I wanted advisors to have a platform where we can hear their peers. And then I heard your podcast, Natural Planner Life, and I was on a flight down to London. And I saw that you did that for people that are maybe newer into industry. And I thought, right, that's the gap. Like we can be doing it for advisors who are in industry wanting to get and become the best that they can. Hence why reaching out to you felt natural when it came to uh, getting that podcast up and running um, as such. Fantastic. Well, I'm massively pleased to be part of the journey. I absolutely love it. Just for those that don't know, just give us an overview of what the podcast is and what you cover on it. Yeah, so in terms of the podcast itself, uh, both of us agreed that we wanted it to always be advisors who were at their best um, or really had a story to tell um, and advisors who could be inspirational to others. Um, so when we are looking at guests, we are always thinking about, well, who does have a story to tell that might encourage others to do the same? everybody's got different personalities so there'll be different advisors that click with different you know personality types so we try and keep it a nice diverse range of advisor background to share their experience expertise and we always say to the advisors when they come on talk to us about an area you're passionate about because that's going to be the most authentic interview that we do so none of it's contrived you know anything like that it's always about what do you want to share with your peers and why do you think your success has been the way it is and that's what's so lovely about it. And that authenticity just comes across because the, the passion and enthusiasm that they have, that you can just tell. And a lot of the time, as you know, a lot of it is fairly, we're not doing it in sort of mega takes, lots of takes and all that type of thing. Oh, we're just letting it flow because it's natural. It's quite often, it's a replication of a conversation we may have had just five minutes before, but we've just turned the cameras on. And, and when people listen to it, what I'm hoping is they're going to take sort of two or three things because you're not going to remember everything, are you? from that and you think yeah actually that's something i'm going to try out or that's something i used to do or something i knew about and i've never tried it so i'm going to go and and, and do that and, and and particularly with with regards to some of the techniques that, that have come out and and some of the things that some of some of the advisors and and, and you know firm principles have, have shared and stuff is is it's the way they've done it how candid they've been how they've felt when certain things have come along, certain things with the market, so the pandemic maybe, and they had to, you know, they just set a business up. So I'm referencing one of them, um, which is, you know, Natalie and um, Charlotte and one of the podcasts that we did um, back earlier in the year, how they felt, how they navigated the different things that came along, what those challenges were. They're really, really willing to share it. And they're showing that passion and that authenticity is coming through. But also with regards to that, all of the advisors have been very, very happy to share what they do. And sometimes you could be forgiven for thinking in our industry that people don't want to share, but they do. We're now giving them a platform to share it. So we're almost celebrating that in a way today because we were a year in from doing it and mm -hmm. providing that platform. And also the linking with yourself in that journey, we very much see that as a, as a journey because you've helped us as, along the way as well. <laughs> I'd like to think we might have developed as, as podcast presenters because uh, we're learning from somebody who you know, does it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic to hear. And I'm pleased, I'm pleased it has this. I think podcasting is a learning experience. So the ability to sit down with somebody and generally just open them up honestly and ask them questions, it's yeah. a learning experience. That's the whole concept of podcasting. It is raw, it is open, and people tend to share um, honestly on a podcast episode. Hazel, tell us about some of the guests that you've had on the podcast over, say, the last 12 months. Any standout guests that really shared something quite inspirational? It's not even just saying this. It's so hard to narrow it down. I feel like an X Factor judge saying that and being diplomatic. Um, but it really is because every single guest we've had, uh, genuinely, there's something in every single episode. I would say if I'm thinking about when I'm developing my webinars and workshops and how and the training that I do out with the podcast with advisors, um, one of the standout moments for me is Neil Bowen's episode where he talks about um, getting your clients to make a promise with you. And he, he talks about the start of the fact find actually have an agreement that you will be identifying areas where they have gaps in their, their finances and, and ways that they could do it better. It starts from the from the very start of the the appointment um 
our first our first thing. So whether we're doing a protection only appointment or a mortgage or both, it starts from the fact finding, um, and it's it's a really easy. We, what we need to do is get permission from from our clients that it's it's okay to talk about everything financial, and um, so ask them. And all I do is I'll run through. I'll I'll tell them that we're going through a financial questionnaire. I'll then say to them that there may be things that you're doing now financially that you could be doing better. And there may be things that you're not doing at all that maybe you should be doing. And if it's all right with you, can I mention it? Mm -hmm. Now, inevitably, they'll say yes. So, of course, now we've got permission that we can talk about anything. What a lovely way to be. That's probably, to me, was so new. I hadn't ever heard someone approach their fact find like that. And I just loved it. And it actually made me think, I kind of want to give it a go. <laughs> I had the chance eh, just to see how I could, you know, I could really picture myself when I was an advisor. That would have worked for me. Um, so I love sharing that episode. Um, and then I see the only the other one, which again brought another angle in, was in Nikki McKenzie's episode um, of Donna McCarthy. She talked about the renter space and actually um, she shared a claim story where she had a lady who, um, before the mortgage had even gone ahead, ended up having to claim on a protection policy. These clients, a lot of them are in rented accommodation, but that doesn't dismiss the need for protection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the people that are sat in front of us all have an income they wouldn't be inquiring yeah. for a mortgage if they didn't um you know a lot of them have families young children so one of the things we've introduced into our process is um advising and encouraging the client to book a separate meeting to look at protection options because just because you haven't found a mortgage that doesn't mean that you're going to be any less impacted necessarily mm. from the loss of your partner or the loss of your income it's still just as important whether yeah. you're rented or you've been really interested. There's a higher risk, isn't it, for yeah. a renter? It's <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, and we try and encourage our clients to say, look, if something happens to you, your landlord isn't going to let you live there rent free. That's not no. how it works. We all know state benefits are not going to match a £40,000 salary, for example. So I think it's just about changing their mindset mm -hmm. to understand why they should look at it sooner rather than later. That's quite eye opening, I think, for a lot of advisors as well, because sometimes you think oh, if the mortgage isn't going ahead, there's no work that needs to be done. And actually, you've got a really big opportunity there to look at their protection needs. And that's one of the things I think I've learned myself because being a podcast host is everybody's got a different way and a different approach to doing something. So you're talking about the fact finding process. Now, over like 150 episodes I've done so far with different financial planners, all in different roles, some of them employed, some of them self-employed, power planners, administrators. And I always learn something from every single episode. And the beautiful thing about it is I retain it, you know, and then the next episode that I talk to somebody, if I, if I, if I talk to them and they give me an example of what they've done, I just repeat an example of what someone else has done and it opens up the conversations even further. And that individual there learns a different approach to doing it. And that's what the podcasting element is, that peer-to-peer -peer learning. It's the, it's bringing together collaboratively the profession to learn from each other. And you guys get to ask those questions that your knowledge grows and grows and grows. So when you go down and sit with other mortgage advisors or financial advisors, you're not just saying the LNG story, you're saying the story of the profession taken from lots of different perspectives and lots of different angles. And that's so powerful when it comes to forging those relationships. And I've benefited from that myself over the last three years of holding a podcast. And it just compounds over time. You tend to get more and more knowledgeable. And it's um it's a really powerful way to build deeper relationships. And the beautiful thing about it as well is you can share those great clips, can't you? You pop those clips out on your social media, you get it out on LinkedIn, more people see it, more engagement, more people learning, a better profession overall. And that's what everyone wants at the end of the day, that collaborative approach to go creating a far better profession. And that comes through that amazing peer-to-peer -peer learning. So Wayne, you mentioned Charlotte Bates and Natalie Wilcox. Was that one of your standout episodes? It was, yeah. They managed the firm Bates Wilcox. And yeah, standout moments for me was really the fact that they opened up a business. I went out on their own. They took a leap of faith, if you like, because they weren't sure about it, as a lot of people aren't when they, they move out into the, the, the big hide world of, of managing their own business. And then the pandemic came along and they just had to pivot straight away, as lots of people did, as LNG did, obviously. And the things that went through their mind, how they had to look at their processes, how they had to rework everything was really put to the test, particularly around, I think, their mindset around selling protection on the telephone. 
So uh, I think they were pretty cautious at first whether it would work, whether they'd have you know the, the right skills, and whether the skills that they had would actually just transfer to the telephone. The attitude that we took, it was like, well, we're not going to get help elsewhere, so let's just get on with it. And luckily, we are surrounded by some really good people and some like the national developers and everything phoned us up, made sure we were all right. You know, we're we're very lucky with our connections, I think, and that kind of helped, didn't it? Because then we were like, okay, fine, we've we've got this. Yeah. And we had our best month. We did. We had our best month ever. So yeah. I think it was in the April, wasn't it? So just after we'd gone into our yeah. into lockdown, I think because it was that whole sink or swim, mm. and we were just like, we are not, we're not losing everything over this. We have to make this work. And yeah, we had our best ever month. So we were like, we've got this. Come on. <laughs> and from that episode, I just took that, you know, you have that dogged determination and enthusiasm to just get on and do it, and like you say, take that leap of faith and maintain that positivity that you've got and also processes as well, you'll get there. So what was good with the way they worked is Natalie, uh, she admitted herself, she's she's more of a numbers person and she managed all that side and the process side of things. And then you've got um, Charlotte that did more of this sort of HR side, the people side, some of the marketing, all that type of thing. And they were just a formidable double act, which was great and, and lovely people at the same time. So yeah, it, it took a lot for, for, from that. Uh, and then also as well, Nicola Crosby, so I think she was episode three and uh, she's a wealth planner and uh, she just demonstrated that resilience of, of, of being a long time in the industry in historically, as we know, tend to be male, male dominated. Um, and, and she just sort of gave a quite, like I said, a candid approach with regards to her own life story, um, some of the personal elements that she's got with regards to her family as well and, and how that sort of determination that she's been able to show uh, and and show the caring side of her for her clients. So the way she builds those deep relationships, really gets to know her clients, really goes over and above and, and helps them with practically anything that they want help with from a financial perspective and more has enabled her to really get sort of kudos in the, in the industry. And, and uh, No, I think they should have that experience. Mm -hmm. I think um, protection is probably the most undersold thing in, in the marketplace. There's still that kind of misconception that claims don't pay out um, I think honestly protection is an easy thing to sell if we're going back to being a state because ultimately you don't get paid if you don't have a product do you but I think if you just really take out the protection yourself really understand it take the time to go to all the webinars and the training sessions that you you guys put on and learn and it's great for cash flow. So the bigger investment cases, the pension transfers, all these things take time. So I, from that as well, I, I really took a real warmth. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, thousands of advisors out there that have those caring and warm relationships with their clients and build that up and, and really demonstrate that on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I like to think the likes of both Natalie and Charlotte, but also Nicola, the others that were listening to it thinking, yeah, you know, that, that's a bit of me. That's that exactly what I do. So those were the two standout ones for me. But as I say, again, you, you put me on the spot with regards to it. The rest of them were so great anyway. So it's, we're so lucky. We've got a wealth of examples of people that have been on the podcast that have been absolutely amazing. So it was That's a great idea, place to be. It? It's, a, it's a great collection of different stories, different experiences, and someone's going to learn something from every single episode. I mean, I never knew Nicola. I recorded the episode and then got to know Nicola really well and brought her on the Financial Planner Live podcast and we bonded so deeply on our episode around running a business and the highs and lows of doing it and the pressure and the stress on your mental health yep. that it can have. Yep. And even reaching a point where, well, what's next? And we were talking also about social media, marketing, branding. She's very passionate about that. It was something that she wanted to do. And you can only, you know, if you go and follow Nicola now and you see what she's doing on social media, on video content, brand mm -hmm. awareness, she's in a place that she's loving what she's doing but she's also seeing the return on investment of the energy that she is yeah. putting out in doing it and her brand is absolutely you know st standing out there's a really lovely conversation we had about her brother who works in the business and how her brother has really taken to the business she's training and developing him and it's one of the proudest moments was seeing her brother without any experience step into the company and is doing incredibly well. And her passion and her enthusiasm for the profession is passed down to her staff. 
Mm-hmm. And that's a great story. And I think anybody listening to it that runs a business can see from the outside, look, just because someone's on camera all the time, just because someone's out there marketing all the time, they have their highs and lows. And I think that's one of the most important things as well. And these open, frank and honest conversations do touch on things like mental health, don't they? Yeah. You know? yeah. And difficulties of running a business, just doing a job in general. And I think when people talk about the highs as well as the lows, you know, it's very, very important. And what do people do to get over it and push forward? And your guests on your podcast are happy to share those journeys so other people around us know well it's okay they struggle i've struggled what can i do about yeah. it mm-hmm. i think that's why people listen to the podcast because they're trying to pick up that authentic kind of what can i learn what can i do differently i think it's so important to share that to share in our industry we always share the highs the, the sort of the celebratory of what, what we do or whatever but it's so important to share those journeys it's so important to share what they were thinking at that time what they're thinking now what they might be thinking about doing next and just to exp- I know we talk about mental health, so I don't mean to sort of label it that, but what, what I mean is just so that it's every day, people are dealing with it every day. People are actually working through life, trying to make sure they're doing the right thing. And, and, and just so someone else might be thinking, yes, that's me. And, and I feel sort of compelled to actually, okay, right, I'm either going to seek help or I'm going to, right, I need to get on and do, take some, take some action, work with someone else, do what I need to do whatever that might be for that particular individual. And I think in our industry this year, if we reflect back or some conscious coming up to, to Christmas, we've had consumer duty, we've had interest rate changes, which has impacted the mortgage world massively in terms of the hours they're having to work, but also the wealth side. They've had, you know, they've had clients phone them up and say, why are my investments not working the way they are? And then that comes with guilt and, and panic. And I think as much as we've maybe not touched upon the mental health side as much in the episode, I think having that outlet and hearing that someone else has felt the same or had that struggle in their business and how they've navigated around it um that makes me really proud because it makes me think well it's not just a cpd learning you know I, i'm wanting to get better at myself um at my business and what i do it's also actually we're in it together as much as our business can be very siloed sometimes our industry can be as wayne said you, you'd assume people don't want to share what they do well actually that's been the lovely thing for it's me is like we always have guests that want to come on because People do want to be a community. They don't actually want to all be separated all the time. And that's been lovely and something that I've really enjoyed. It's interesting though, isn't it? We're in an office today and you, now mm. post pandemic, you're going to an office and you don't always know if everyone's going to be in. So you, before you'd go in, you'd see everyone. So that together is now that you, you would have. By nature, a lot of us now are remote. Mm-hmm. So that element with regards to the podcast with people wanting to be on is bringing that togetherness forward and making sure that people have got that opportunity to share their stories and those people can hopefully resonate with those. Everyone's in the same boat, right? Collaboration, not competition. One of the powerful yeah. things that I think podcasts do as well and the stories that you're sharing around the profession, so it's bringing people together, okay? It gives people perspective. So they're not in, a, they're not in the boat alone. They're with other people. They're going on the same sort of journey. But oxytocin's released when you listen to something. So when you listen to something and you listen intently and you relate to it, your body releases the love drug. It releases <laughs> oxytocin so you feel good and it remembers that powerful moment that you felt. And that's what the power of speech, the talking, listening, these are the things that create that oxytocin, that create connection. So your audience are naturally then drawn to the story of the next person that comes along because that next person's story is a different perspective and it might give that individual a different perspective instead of them just sitting on their own thinking. Because I think when you run a business, when you do a job where predominantly it is sales driven, right? We can't say sales, and but it, you know, you, you've, you've got to go out and win new clients. You've got to win new business. Often it can be very kind of isolating in your mind and you compare yourself to others, other businesses, oh, they're doing really well, or, um, you know, I'm, I'm never, never going to be as good as that company. And you're sort of running on your own thinking. And I think, again, it kind of gives you that ability to go onto a podcast and listen to somebody else's journey and gain different perspective without having to step outside of your bedroom, for example, you know, and it has a positive impact on people's life. I've heard podcasts, I've listened to episodes um, of multiple podcasts and I've sat there and gone, wow, that's absolutely changed my perspective. And I've then gone and pursued what that person was talking about and changed my life. So yeah, I'm all for it. I think that peer-to-peer learning element and what you're doing within this space is absolutely fantastic. I think the more people do it, the more collaborative we are within the financial planning, well, financial planning, financial services, mortgage and protection, we need it because it needs to grow. But the guests that you're on, that bringing on here, they're not alone. People want to learn from each other and help each other and help this profession grow. That's something I'm definitely seeing 
on the Financial Planner Life podcast. It's a big, big part of it. And I think the next generation that are coming through are all about collaboration. So they want a job with purpose. They want to help other people. Mm -hmm. So that isolation kind of like, oh, I'm the best and I'm going to keep it all to myself mentality is gone. Mm -hmm. I think people want to share. They want to help other people because you put good out, good comes back to you. It's that laws of attraction mentality. And I've definitely exper experienced it. You know, when I focus in on, on my podcast episodes with my guests, it's like, well, what can I get out of them that's going to help other people? Mm -hmm. Can I get it out there and how many people can listen to it? How many, how many people can I positively impact? And guess what? Those people that you positively impact come back to you as well. And yeah. it's a lovely sort of cycle and experience. So, yeah, I love it. I hear exactly what you're saying. I echo everything you're saying on that, on that I front. I think also so. as well that it, it's great that we've got people coming on, advisors coming on, that are giving a balanced view. People want to yeah. hear a balanced view. They don't just want to hear all the great stuff. Yeah. They want to hear exactly what they're, what they're going through, all that type of thing, warts and all. Warts and all. And, and that's, what, that's the beauty of the people that we're bringing on. It yeah. really is. So you've been doing the podcast for a year now. Is there any sort of standout proud moments that you've had from being a Just Covered podcast host? Uh, host? Uh, Hazel, let us know. Yeah, so for me, there's probably three, three things that stood out this year as proud moments um, for the podcast. The first was getting the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, you know, you, using different platforms. Because I remember when I joined LNG and said I wanted to do a podcast, it, it was a case of, wow, that's quite a big task they, that you've got. So this year getting it on all those platforms is, I think to both of us has felt really, really good. And it was the aim that we set at the start of the year for ourselves. Um, and then I had a really, really lovely moment actually at a big network event um, just last month. And another business development manager from a competitor provider actually came up to me and said, you're the podcast girl, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, like Wayne and I do it. And and she said, do you know what? She goes, although you're a competitor, I share it with all my accounts because the content is really useful. And that felt so nice because again, quite often we can be siloed. We can, you know, I agree with you, collaboration is key in our industry, but we are competitors at the end of the day as well. So to have that felt really lovely. Um, and then finally, it's the advisor sentiment and who we do it for. I've had um, some advisors reach out and message me on LinkedIn and I think Wayne has as well um, and come up to us at events and say, I learned so much from that bit or I loved what I heard, you know, Nathan Ansell was one of them, business protection specialist. We've got so many advisors wanting to get into that space at the moment. And I've had advisors come back to me and say that really helped me know not to give up and to keep trying to approach these accountants and solicitors and that's so nice and that's the whole purpose of it being met uh, which feels great from you you know you've got a wealth of experience that you've found the same but you've overcome it yeah. and been patient with that yeah and i think it, it, it's taken a long time to do that because it is breaking that barrier down of speaking to a company learning uh, getting their trust really gaining it and then from there it is oh that is value I can add to my clients because it is really tough, I think, to not seem like just you're trying to sell, sell, sell to people. Yeah. It is actually a service you're offering that does benefit them and their clients. So it's a win-win for all. No, that's fantastic. What I love about also putting it out onto the different platforms that are out there is that there's a new audience that are going to be listening to it. Because you might think, well, I want to engage with the current clients that I'm working with um, or clients within that space. But actually, when you put it out there on a public platform, anybody from a different profession could listen to it because they might be interested in the guests that you have on there. So if someone's really interested in, say, becoming a financial advisor, you're interviewing a financial advisor, they're going to use that from an educational perspective, take a peek into the world and the life of that person who works in the role that they're thinking about joining. So again, when you put it out there on those major platforms and make it public, you're indirectly, sort of, or directly, I suppose, impacting perhaps somebody's life when it comes to their career because you're sharing a story of somebody that works within the profession that they're thinking about joining and that's what i also love you know that impact that you can have outside of what you kind of have been in the world that you've been in it goes further than that and i love the fact that someone actually a networking event from a right yeah. from a competitor <laughs> has come to you and actually said fair play i absolutely love that and actually shared it with their audience now to me that's powerful mm -hmm. And I think that's because when we set up the podcast, as much as we work for legal in general, obviously it's got our logo and things, we never ever speak about legal in general product because the point of the podcast is an education for advisors to better their skills um, and actually look at, as I said, that peer-to-peer -peer coaching. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that resonated there when you were saying about that reach, um, ideally 
in a you know if we were to think blue sky thinking every single person would have a financial advisor every single person would see their financial advisor in the same way they see their doctor or their dentist and it'd be that natural the only way we can grow our industry and grow that awareness externally is to actually have that peer-to-peer -peer support be doing things like this because again a, a customer could come across these and actually think oh that advisor sounds great or you know, maybe I don't understand all that they're saying, but I need to think about that for my business. And, you know, that is where it also is, is really nice to think it's actually just hopefully raising the awareness of the need for financial mortgage and protection advice in general. Absolutely. How about you, Wayne? Any proud moments? I think for me, it's an overall proud moment. <laughs> Excuse me. In us giving a platform to those advisors to be able to do it the fact to, to sort of sit back and hear what they're saying and see that go out and get listens again people have come up to me and, and and reached out with regards to what we've been doing that we've been able to do that because it, it links in with a wider good that we're trying to do we're trying to protect more people we're trying to improve their financial um futures if if something bad happens them, if things bad like that happen in life they just do and we've got advisors out that are doing that good and we've been able to provide that platform for them to actually share what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there before. It may have not been something that they thought consciously about, oh, I'm, I need to share and I need a platform for it. Well, they may have done. And, and the stars aligned and they've, they've come on the podcast. So I think the fact that we've got that there and the way we've moved on from the first episode and the partnership with yourself and, and making sure that you know we're developing as we're going along as, as as podcast hosts because we're trying to make sure we're we're as good as we can be but really it's all about the, it's all about the, the, the people that came on the advisors that come on we're not talking about products we're talking about improving the market and making sure that awareness hints and tips one-liners all those types of things that we're doing to make sure that as many people know about the great things that are happening out there and for mm. me, it's just that overall pride in that. And it links in with the overall LNG inclusive capitalism um, strapline that we've got, which is all about improving society in a multitude of ways. But this is one of those ways. I love it. And I love the fact that as well, that you touched on the fact that you've improved as a person over the last year of hosting the podcast, because it is a skill set. You threw yourselves in at the deep end and you really went for it. And it is quite terrifying because I've done exactly that. People think I'm a natural extrovert. I did a presentation yesterday on stage to like 100 people. That terrifies me. You know, stepping outside of your comfort zone and actually doing something completely different, it opens you up to a completely different skill set and it actually opens you up to a completely different audience and how that audience then interprets you. You're seen differently. And that's one of the most powerful things that I think I've took from being like we a were the other way, weren't we? Because we've probably been used to getting up doing presentations and obviously we still get nervous. Oh, it's yeah. a natural thing, I think. But I remember when we first did the podcast, right, we're rolling. Ah. I don't think I slept the night before when we did that because it was on my phone. The very, very first episode we filmed was just on my work phone. And it was just with a, one tripod, a couple of lights and my work phone and some you know, cheap microphones. And I remember setting up and, oh gosh, I was in such a panic thinking, is this going to be right? But as Wayne said, like I can stand up on a stage and speak in front of hundreds of people and that doesn't give me the same nerves. So yeah, we've grown as, ourselves, haven't we? Yeah, and I think that also we've got a similar characteristic in us. We'll do all the planning. We want to make sure certain things are right and we'll do it right. But I think we've also got an element in us of myself and Hazel, right, let's just do it. Let's yeah. just run with it. And that's why this podcast has come along. Let's yeah. do it. Let's make it happen. And, and and that's what we demonstrated in that first one. Okay, we are pretty nervous on this, but let's just roll and, and see how we get on. And then obviously yeah. then... Kudos to Adrian for being the first guest and putting yeah. up with that. Big kudos. <laughs> I found, um, so one of the major things from podcasting that I found, right, is it's an amazing business development tool. So because people get to know who you are before you even speak to them. So now, like three years into doing my podcast, now I reach out to people. They're like, oh my God, you know, it's you on the, you know, the host of the Financial Power Life podcast because they see me on social media or they might have heard my episode. I forget sometimes it's about eight to 10,000 listens of my podcast a month. So I'm in the ears <laughs> eight to 10,000 times. Yeah, I'm petrified and standing on stage to 100 people. But um, yeah, I find the using the podcast as a business development tool to kind of build a relationship before you've even stepped in front of somebody is powerful. So I always say to anybody, look, if you're looking to up your game when it comes to business development, building that personal brand, because obviously it affects your personal brand as well, but also the company brand, podcasting is such a super way of doing it. And you can repurpose that content so well. It could be blog articles. It could be uh, podcast episodes. It could be YouTube videos. It could be clips that you share out on LinkedIn. You could cut them up into TikToks, whatever you want to actually do, pop them out on emails, embed them. It's such a huge way that you can use it from a brand and marketing perspective 
to build that deeper relationship. So I think podcasts are you know incredibly powerful for that. So guys, where do you see the podcast going in the next 12 months or next year? Uh, so I dream for it really into next year and the planning that we've we've thought about um, between the two of us is we'd really like to see like what's the next level we can provide in terms of CPD. So as much as advisors can self-cert their CPD, um, we'd really love to see if there is a way that can we actually get this accredited so that advisors can get structured CPD off the back of, of listening to an episode. So that's what we're working to do. We're trying to work with that. If there are any accrediting bodies out there who want to link up and help, then absolutely reach out um, because that is going to be next on the radar. We've not started it yet. It's in planning, um, but that is hopefully going to be into 2024 to kind of help those advisors who are listening get even more back out of that as well. I think that's a really fantastic way of using a podcast without a shadow of a doubt. And I've got somebody that I'll introduce to you afterwards. Perfect. <laughs> How about you, Wayne? What do you reckon the next 12 months hold for the Just Cover podcast? Well, obviously more guests, which is great. Uh, but I think broadening out, continuing to broaden out the different areas of financial planning, the different extra elements that, that financial advisors and planners, mortgage advisors do in helping clients to, to meet their goals. So we've done a little bit of that with wealth advisors this year. We, we've also... Uh, we're probably thinking about broadening out to maybe the equity release market, the wider mortgage broking market as well, and some of those other areas. So it's it's just naturally, I think, trying to move into those areas to broaden that reach. Um, and also revisiting some of the other areas we've covered again, because conscious from so the background I've had in the training and the learning and development and all that type of thing, sometimes you'd have to recover things to to, to remind people to ensure that they're that that learning they're getting is, is embedding and all that type of stuff so we might revisit some areas and uh, we've got some ideas that we're going to look at and kick around before we put them into practice but yeah really looking forward to next year it's going to be, be really really good but any big industry topics do you think will happen over the next 12 months so we'll always i guess every year we have our claims um data that will be getting released and that's always um big in our industry that's what we're here for and that's really the purpose of what we do so we'll definitely try and get some um, great guests in to speak about their experience um with that when we think about the industry as a whole obviously consumer duty landed this year but it's actually that reflection piece of how have advisors navigated that so i think touching upon that more will be great and then as wayne said equity release is a massively growing area and a consumer trend especially with bank of mum and dad research we've done recently i think it was 47 percent of homeowner or well, people buying a home under 55 needed help from their friends family relatives so again tapping into that space and thinking about how do we make sure financial advice is still right when people are maybe not able to borrow as much as they used to. And that's really important um, for our industry going forward. Yeah, equity release is going to be a big one, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that. There used to be loads of equity release advisors. I wonder if people are going to start becoming, because you have to be qualified to be an equity release advisor, yeah, there's don't an you? extra exam yeah. um, that you have to do. So I did that quite a few years ago now. But yeah, it's a shorter exam, but it is, yeah, it's an extra exam. There's, there's extra things you need to consider with regards to vulnerability as well of your customer, um, that the Equity Release Council have certain caveats as to what they'd expect. It's a bit of a heightened fact find around that, that yeah, advice. Vulnerability, the client vulnerability is a massive thing, isn't it? Because it's, it's wide open for clients, perhaps of a certain age, to be manipulated into releasing that equity. Or, or it's, yeah, it's, even if it's not a case that they're manipulated, their family would maybe not understand why they've done it. Right. why they've chosen to do it so it's, it's getting the family involved as well when you're looking at that advice space which again is completely different to any other advice space that, that we operate in really well i'm really looking forward to hearing more about that over the next 12 months because it's a really interesting topic excellent yeah. the consumer duty side of things again we will, will continue to revisit because it's something that's going to be ongoing since its implementation in july it's certainly not the once and done it's just getting in and finding out how advisors have changed their processes, what they're doing differently, what, how are they helping customers with a vulnerability perspective? Because if you're thinking about that and you're thinking about putting clients first and trying to make sure that you're ensuring those good outcomes, you need to be taking a step back and looking at your process to find out, okay, what could go wrong? Where could they misunderstand things? How am I checking and testing they've understood what I've recommended to them? How am I making sure that they know where to go if something happens? If they have a claim, how will I help them with regards to making that claim and ensuring they need to get out of that what they need to get, i.e. the money paid to the right place at the right time and all that type of thing. So I think though all those types of things bring brought together for next year, like the claim stats, as Hazel already mentioned, will will be in line with that. 
and, and, and crucial. The consumer duty is here to stay and it's something that uh, we'll be talking about a lot, I think, going forward. So implement customer duty as a course of action naturally without it being forced upon you. Um, so if you're looking at a client's situation, because if you've got long-standing clients and you can look at your situa their situation, the way I always see it, whenever I'm meeting a client, it's my duty to make sure that I've taken some level of responsibility to make sure they're going to be better off from taking advice from me. I think it's just building your confidence. If you become confident in your skills and your ability, um, I think I suffered from imposter syndrome really badly until about five years ago. And then one day I woke up and I thought, I'm as good as everyone in this room, if not better. And then you've got to remember that because the confidence really comes back through to the client and they don't question your advice. They know that they're in safe hands. So finding what, what will help you get to that level where you feel confident and I think for me, it was working on a variety of different things, really pushing my knowledge, really building those deep relationships with clients, you know, and pushing my boundaries, finding things that were hard to do, finding out how to do them. And then one day you go, actually, I'm like probably at the top of my game now and and I've worked hard and I'm going to enjoy it now. And anyone that's watching, I don't, business it's not scary. Like it's not just do the CPD. Um put the hours in and then you'll get there. And if anyone is just starting out, I would say relevant life is probably the easiest quick win. It's not complicated. It's just putting the um, limited company paying the policy, not the person, and it's allowable business expense. So accountants will be happy to hear that. Um, and I was also executive IP. Absolutely, yeah. Wayne, you're exactly right. If you don't want to write, that's okay, yeah. but just make sure that somebody does it then. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah i think like you said we said earlier the last thing you want is that phone call from somebody mm. to say nobody told me this nobody made me aware of this that's just not what any advisor wants i think value yourself uh, is one of the things that we would definitely you know put forward because i think a lot of advisors do undervalue themselves um and their knowledge i think and unless you believe in it yourself you're not going to be able to to help other people with it anyway but also, you don't need to have loads of knowledge on every single product out there. You know, a lot of people think that they need to know every critical illness policy there is and all the definitions, and, and you, you don't. You know, at the end of the day, the, the, all you're doing really is put forward a need, and the client will tell you what the need is if you ask the right questions. So I think it's just a case of find, find something that works for you um, if you've had a claim then you'll find that that works for you every time anyway, because you you know the need. But if you don't believe in yourself, then you're not going to do it. But the mindset, it is just mindset. Mm -hmm. So if you just have to believe it yourself and believe in your ability. And I do think a lot of advisors don't, don't have that. And I think, to be honest, unless you believe in yourself, nobody else is going to believe you, so... No, I agree. And I think for me, it's, you know, any advice that I could, could give to, you know, any advisor out there is how would you handle one of those calls like I took? And are you confident that you gave the client the opportunity to protect themselves, family and their home? Because if you didn't, you need to, you know, you need to question what you're doing, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and get good admin. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a really difficult one. But um, I think don't recommend anything that you wouldn't be comfortable doing yourself or if you haven't done it yourself. You know, so if you're talking about income protection, make sure you've got a policy for income protection. You know, uh, there, there is stories as well that, you, you know, some brokers that you, you see that carry around their policies in their, in their briefcase you know, and, and get them out and show, show the customer, this is something that I've done. This is why you should do it. Well, I think we've probably already said it, but, you know, putting, putting the client, the customer, at the centre of everything you do. Um, because ultimately, you know, they they are the customer, and you know, it's understanding the position they're probably in when you meet them, uh, and making sure that your process addresses that in a way that they can understand. So, you know, take jargon out of it. You know, don't talk complicated products with them, and all. Get get them to, uh, you know, uh, be at the center of your whole process, so that ultimately. Uh, at the end, they come out of it with products that they understand 
uh, and can afford. It's about making a decision that if protection is important to you and your clients, be honest about what you're going to do about it and then work it into your process as a business. Uh, make it something you always do. You always have the conversation. You have the same conversation or the same structured conversation. And then if, if for whatever reason, you're not going to be able to write it, there are firms that you can refer to. And I'm not, I'm not pitching us. There are plenty of great protection firms out there. Refer it to somebody who you know will do a great job for you, but, but do one or the other. I think the most important thing in tying in with the consumer duty is to have that word of holistic. Let's ensure that if you've got a mortgage and protection license, you're offering all protection products and quoting all of them. Uh, and as we said earlier, um, mortgage protection for most families and most individuals quite often it isn't enough. So ensure that you are offering everything that you possibly can. And if you cannot place the case yourself, look at outsourcing it to an organization such as ourselves, which might be able to go a little extra further mile and get the client the outcome that they need. Stop making assumptions on what the client wants before even asking them. I think people are stuck in a one track mind of everyone wants these kind of products. Just be completely open. Let them tell you what they want and don't be forceful. I would say, I would say be open minded and try something new. Um, I really do think that the more people that are willing to try the new innovations that we have and the new services that we have, the more investment that we're going to get. So I would say just go and try something new and I think you'll be presently surprised. I would say make sure you know who you are, what's your identity, and then find the technology to complement that. Don't change who you are for the technology because the technology to complement you is out there. It'll sound glib, but it's to listen to the clients. And going back to my very first point about how I didn't want to join financial services, I think it's because it is such a dry subject. I mean, the exams are not my favourite. But it's ultimately, it's a people industry. You are talking to people. Um, just have a chat to them, find out. And there can be so many interesting people you meet and different situations. So take that time because you know, you may not sell something and it may be that one moment that you don't get anything, but the next one you might. So just treat each person the same, listen to exactly what they need, and then it'll be the best outcome for them because they'll get the best policies and for you because you'll make the money. So I'm going to go completely off script here. Okay, so the one piece of advice... Um, there's someone in the room here that I uh, I have a lot of respect for, Sam. And um, Sam does this thing where he he messages me and he asks me out of 10, how am I feeling? Okay. Mental health is not something that advisors and admin and power planners and that we would talk enough about. Our job is so hard, so lonely. And also sometimes you carry the the burden, the weight of all those expectations of those clients. Um, he has a knack of texting me in the days when I'm naught to five rather than five to ten. Um, and all I think the top tip would be for everyone just to to always message other people and just simply ask them on a day how they're feeling out of ten and not be afraid of other people messaging them and asking how they feel out of ten. And I think it's our industry's tough, really tough at the moment. And I just think it's really, really important. So as a top tip, it's just not about doing more. It's just about you know, caring about others, looking after others. Great. So some fantastic guests over the last 12 months. What are some of the top tips that they've given you that you can share with our audience today? I've got one. Go on in. Yeah, Nicola Crosby. Absolutely brilliant. It was it was just so good. These one-liners you have, and we we talked to them about people when we were presenting and stuff, but I just love it when an advisor gives you that. And if it's one you've heard before, great. But if you haven't, and she said, uh, and I think it was, don't just protect your health. No, don't, don't just protect your wealth, protect your health. And I just thought that was amazing you know if you're a wealth planner out there and you're thinking about how am i going to do that customers have got a big portfolio how am i going to actually get the concept of protection in there you could use that line you know, signpost it whatever as well provide context but you can use that line to then talk about oh, okay the customer might say well, what do you mean by that and the next thing you know you're into a conversation about protecting their health and their wealth Fantastic. It draws into well-being, doesn't it? Which is such a big thing at the moment within yeah, the financial yeah, yeah. planning space without a shadow of a doubt, you know, uh, financial well-being. But as you say, health is wealth. Yeah. How about you? 
Uh, for me, it was something that I'd never come across before was Sora Keo, um, when she was in the tech episode, mentioned uh, a data prisoner. That was something that I'd never, ever heard of. So for those listening, it's uh, if you have decided to use a specific tech company and actually they now own your data, actually, how do you get your client bank back out again? And uh, I thought that was really valuable advice for advisors looking to explore the, the world of tech because it's probably something I wouldn't have thought about uh, when doing it. So um, she absolutely, in that episode, talks through why it's so important to really sense check your contracts when you are looking for kind of firms to to collaborate with in a tech space. And I thought it was really good advice. That's really interesting. I had a guest on my podcast and he has, he's, an, he's a chartered financial planner, but he's got his own YouTube channel. So he creates content um, from a coaching perspective. Now, what came up was intellectual property rights. So actually who owns, um, actually who actually owns the content that you're putting out if you're employed? So if a company wanted to then say, oh, you know, if, if I was a financial advisor and I wanted to set my own YouTube channel up, who owns the content? And he genuinely believe that in the future there'll be issues around intellectual property rights. You know, so that's a really interesting area and something that's well worth looking into. Fantastic. Look, the last 12 months has been absolutely fantastic. It's been brilliant to be on the journey with you. We've absolutely enjoyed listening to each and every one of the episodes live. I get that privilege of actually <laughs> sitting down and hearing all the guests. So it's been wonderful to be on the journey with you. I'm super pumped to join you for the next 12 months and see where the Just Covered podcast goes onwards and upwards in my eyes. Likewise, and Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas everyone. Thank you.